You are now listening to the Highlight Reel Builder for Authors, the Going North Podcast. I'm your host, certified self-leadership trainer and author of the best-selling book, Stay the Course, Dom Brightman. And you're going to be getting some goodies today from the guest that's up next. And today on the High Live Real Builder for Authors, known as the Going North Podcast, we got a treat for you today, my friends, a treat for you today, because my goodness, this wonderful, super special, awesome human today, folks, that's right, this place is known for attracting super special, awesome humans who have the skills to pay the bills and to help you discover what those skills are, heck, even probably polish the ones you have, because today's guest, she worked 30 years in corporate insurance before being laid off, and it was that moment that she chose to take her acquired skills in corporate and created her own career as an entrepreneur slash well, actually, you know what? That's actually the best way, the entrepreneur, baby. That's right. It ain't just someone who wrote a book. This is an entrepreneur, baby, and a wonderful coach, too, because she's the best-selling author of this super special, awesome book, Steal Your Skills from Corporate. That's right. Steal Your Skills from Corporate, baby. That's right. Band of Keith style. And this is the wonderful book that's going to coach you through the mindset that takes you from the transition of employee status to becoming the CEO of your life as a new entrepreneur. So let's give it up for Miss KR herself, Miss Katrina Roddy. How you doing today, Katrina? I hear the crowd. <laughs> I'm doing well. Thank you much. That was an awesome interview. I mean, an awesome introduction. Hey, I'll take both. It's like some people will be saying, hell yeah, good morning when it's in the afternoon. I'm like, shoot, I'll take good morning too. Shoot, it's, it's morning somewhere. <laughs> I'll take it. Thank you, bud. <laughs> oh, man. But yes, indeed. Yes, indeed. Well, as you know, with all introductions, they're not allowed to be 75 days long. And I'm probably sure I forgot a whole bunch of stuff. So mind filling in the cavities I missed about you, Katrina? No, um, other than I am a single mom to a 19-year-old who is... Um, who's in music and he's in arts and very well um, developing child, I should say. Young adult. That's right. Young adult swag. That's right. 19. Yeah. Those Gen Zers. Those Gen Z. Oh yeah. That's right. The Gen Z. They can see. That's right. Yeah. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah. That's right. Yeah. Listeners know the corn stays growing here. (laughs) 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 Oh, my goodness. Well, corporate for 30 years and single mom status and basically having to balance all that. So stealing skills from corporate. So what inspired the wonderful title? Because not everybody would think of this. Like, oh, shoot, steal skills from corporate. Oh, no, I don't want to steal. I just want to wear a halo. (laughs) <laughs> you can still wear that halo. So what inspired it was, you know, me working in corporate for many, many years. Um, I literally started right out of high school. So I graduated high school in June. I started my corporate career in July. And it was because the college I was attending, I went to a very strict business college. So if you can imagine, you know, maybe your parents are helping you with your books when you when you need to go into college. I had to buy suits because I had to go to work in an environment that allowed, that made us wear suits. So one of my classes was me actually working. So I'd go to work half day and then I'd go to school. So that kind of kicked off my career in corporate and, and allowed me to be there so long. But I did know after a certain point that I was not gonna be in corporate anymore. And it just came sooner than I expected. So I was laid off. Once I was laid off and I started entering into entrepreneurship, I started realizing that I had skills that maybe some other entrepreneurs had not developed or they were seeking. And it just came from either life skills or some things I had learned in corporate because this was my job and I had to do it over and over. So Dom, I had people, I would go to networking events and 
you know, I would talk to individuals and they would say, hey, can you help our team with budgeting? I'm like, sure. Can you help us with, you know, you know, filling out these things and how do we get goals? And sure. And there was one lady that pulled me to the side and said, honey, you give out too much free information. <laughs> this is your job. <laughs> and so that's when I learned that I had all of these skills that I had acquired and I was just doing them because that's what I was so used to doing. And I decided to take it all and compile it into one area for people to get to. And that was my book. So my book actually has eight steps in there that will help you start from beginning to end of you becoming an entrepreneur and things that you can hold on to. It becomes a toolkit after that. So I say steal your skills from corporate, but really corporate is a metaphor for life. We all have some type of skills that we can take and create our own career. Does that make sense? Ah, with all the nickels and pennies, that's what I'm talking about. Yeah. Yes, indeed. Yes, indeed. So my goodness, like, yeah. You know, we always need that person that pulls the side and be like, hey, what the heck you doing, Mike? This is... <laughs> right. <laughs> right. <laughs> I was like, I'm just doing it. So I was so used to training people and showing people things. And she's like, on this side of the world, we, we charge for that. Yeah. <laughs> I said, okay. Yeah. But yeah, that just, you know, it created this entrepreneur coach and I would help people get through these things. But you know, the biggest thing is when I start talking to them about their skills and how to pull those skills, what I learned is that a lot of them have the fear of transition. So it's transitioning from one mindset to another mindset that's really keeping them trapped. If you can imagine you've been in corporate, you've been told what time to come in, what time to go to lunch, who your friends are, who your clients are. You've been told all of these things. And when you become an entrepreneur, no one's telling you any of this. So you got to kind of figure it out on your own and you need to know what, what is the next step? How do I do this? I went through it. And that's what I learned immediately when I started coaching individuals is that they're just trying to figure out what do I do next? How do I do it? You know, we identify the skills, but then they need to know what steps do I take to get to get going in this career. Uh, that's what I'm talking about indeed. And I feel like that's needed now more than ever for folks to get some information, some true information from genuine entrepreneurs of what it's really like because last year in particular probably turned a lot of people into entrepreneurs. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it really did. Last year in particular is, you know, layoffs are, they're inevitable. They're going to happen because you're not part of that corporate mind. Like when they're making up their mind to, to get to their bottom line or get to whatever they're trying to do, you're part of the equation, but not the part you thought you were going to be. <laughs> so, like I said, I thought that, you know, I had enough time to figure out what I wanted to do when I, decide, when I decided to leave corporate. But sometimes that happens before you can expect it. And last year was a, a pure testament to, we can do what we want. We have to survive. So they go into survival mode, which pushes you into survival mode. And you go through things. I mean, there's the same thing I heard you, um, I heard another one of your interviews with some, and I forget her name, but it was a relationship coach. And if you can think about this, you're going through the same thing you go through in a personal breakup. You go through the anxiety, there's anger, there's sleep disturbances, there's just you trying to figure it out, what do I do next? And I think the biggest difference between the corporate breakup, which is my company now, the corporate breakup and a relationship breakup is that people will usually come to your rescue when you have a personal breakup. They may bring wine over, they'll come around you, they'll bring ice cream, <laughs> <laughs> they'll do all of these things and they'll tell you, work on yourself before you move on. When you have a corporate breakup, they're like, that girl needs to find a job. <laughs> <laughs> so but both of them need the same amount of healing to move on and I just want people to recognize that and that's where my company comes in the corporate breakup because I really help with that transition so it's all about the transitioning into an entrepreneur mind yes indeed because folks are going to need that heck even going back to that wonderful time where that colleague of yours pulled you to the side and say hey like hey we charge people for that like what how long did it take you from that point to 
now when you basically started charging people and deciding your price points for your offerings? Um, it probably took about a year because I had to figure out like what, you know, I had to structure my business at that point. What do I do? Like, I know how to use these skills. I, I've, I've created this book. I know how to follow these things, but how do I make it into a business? And so at that point, um, if anybody out there is listening in their audience, make sure you invest in you. Make sure you invest in some of the systems that will help you get there. I see a lot of people right now, maybe they want, don't want to invest in it. And then they're, they're getting caught up in social media. They'll look at social media and say, this person's doing this and this person's doing that. So they're kind of piecing their, their work together and it's just taking them longer to get there. So if you can, if you can find the time and the, the resources to invest in yourself up front, then it just helps you move along the way faster. So that's what I did. Yeah, because you ain't kidding about that invest just investing in yourself because that's the most important investment you'll make. Heck, even if I'm not mistaken, like one of your investments sets you up for success to write this book in 24 hours, right? Yeah, yeah. So you read that. It did. Um, it was just because I hired a writing coach and that was her style and that's what she wanted. We didn't know that we were going to write a book in 24 hours, but once you know, we worked on some things and worked on cadence and it comes with, um, it's just not like picking up a piece of uh, paper and pen and writing, you know, it, it's more about a strategy to get there. So along the way, you know, it could have been a month or so along the way, we've been building this big, big, ginormous outline. And then when it came time to actually write the book, she's like, okay, fill in the blanks. So that's what it does. I mean, you know, it, it sounds like, because I even said, I'm like, nobody writes a book in 24 <laughs> hours, but it was three days of eight hours each that got me through it. But I had, everything was outlined. All I was doing was filling in the blanks at that point. I knew my writing cadence. I knew like, these are things that they helped with, but that was part of my investment to myself because I wanted to do that. I wanted to move forward and to become an entrepreneur. Ah, uh, yeah, that's what I'm talking about indeed. And like just finding your writing cadence like that's something like entirely new to me when I first heard you mention it I'm like wow writing cadence like I've heard of like cadence with like spoken word poetry and heck even public speaking but of writing yeah. cadence so with that what so with that so with people who are looking to really because there's like a lot of folks who listen to the show they're either authors already working on the next book they're looking to write their First book, any advice for them to find their own writing cadence? Yeah, I mean, there's a certain time of the day that you feel more energetic and you write. You may write faster during that time. Uh, I like to say that it's hard to get writer's block as long as you can talk. Just keep talking through things. You may start writing stuff that doesn't even make sense, but you need to get it out there. And that that's going to help with your cadence, right? Cause you're just, you're getting some words out a long time ago. Um, you know, I have to do, because I had insurance, I have to do a lot of these courses to get your license. Right. And this guy uh, was teaching us how to take these exams that we have to take for insurance. And one guy said something that made a lot of sense and you can apply that to a lot of things. And one thing is it takes a minute for your brain to warm up. So it, if you're just writing stuff, you're just writing stuff and you're just typing whatever comes to mind. And then all of a sudden you may get into a groove of where you really actually need some of that stuff. And now you can go back and edit and take out all of the stuff that you didn't need. So when I say find your cadence, it, find what time of the day works best for you. Find what area of your home or outside or whatever gives you the most energy. Find um, how much time does it take me to write you know, 500 words? And then you practice on that. So after you start fi figuring out these things, then all of a sudden you have a cadence and you know the next day I can go back and do it at this time because I feel like I have something. Like there's a structure in place for you at that point. So writing cadence just means, hey, just like, just like if a speaker has a cadence, they have to practice it over and over before they get that, you know, that final word. Like when I introduce myself, I tell people as well, I'm like, I have a cadence so that people can hold on to some of the words. And 
when I teach people and when I'm coaching them, I do the same thing. I'm like, practice it over and over so that you, it, come, it becomes a rhythm for you. And so that's the same as writing. Oh, yeah, that's right indeed. That's right indeed. She's dropping them gems, y'all. I'm telling you. Y'all gonna have a tennis brace of the wisdom when this interview's over, baby. I'm telling you. Better get them gems down. That's right. Not a tennis bracelet. <laughs> okay, fine. A necklace or a belly dancer skirt. That's a lot of gems, right? <laughs> Sure, sure. <laughs> <laughs> yes indeed yes indeed oh the magical gems at D. that's right because it's so darn true it's like heck it reminds me of the probably a lot of people working nine to fives when they don't have their coffee like oh don't don't talk to me yet i don't have my coffee yet and they take that one sip after taking that one good old whiff of the good old mug and it's like okay all right, now I can handle people. <laughs> yeah, I mean, that's absolutely right. You just, they found their groove. They know that they need that one sip or whatever it is to, to make them, to help them with their day. So it is. It's, uh, you know, a little meditation, a little breathing. It's a, just kind of figuring out where, who you are as a person before you do those things. Oh, yeah. That's right, indeed. That's right. I've got to figure out who you are before doing those things, indeed. That's right. And then getting in that operating rhythm, that magical cadence. That's right. Yeah. And then you realize you have an alter yeah. ego named Cadence for no reason. Even as a guy. Let me stop. <laughs> well, well, that's <laughs> Oh my goodness. Well, since this is interview number 44, since you've been keeping track and you've been on the locomotive flow, <laughs> is there a question that you wish you'd be asked more often when you're on the guest side of the game on these podcasts? Um, you know what? It, what's interesting about doing so many podcast interviews or being interviewed is that even though I can talk about the same subject, the host will always come up with something that that will take me in a different direction. Um, not necessarily a different direction, but they may want to focus on one topic other than, you know, go through everything. Um, I was a guest with a lady from um, Johannesburg and she wanted to really focus on my introduction and my elevator speech. And so we talked about that, you know, most of the time. So to, to answer your question, is there one question? No, I think I've just been you know, wherever you, wherever you take me is what direction I'll go in. I've been doing this long enough now. <laughs> I can answer these questions. Uh, so do you believe the penguins will finally take over the earth from the humans? Let me stop. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I'll just mess with you, die. But yes, indeed. Yes, indeed. So with that transitional period of finally... Really getting the magical book out and getting that, I guess, that evil notice. Well, then again, not really evil, because funny enough, listening to your past stuff is like, you kind of spoke it into existence and it just came early, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah. Yeah, be careful. Like, words will manifest. They will manifest. You just don't know when, but they'll happen. They will happen. So, yeah, it's, um, it's still daunting, though. I mean, even though you... You could kind of, it, it, whether you felt it was coming or you didn't know it was coming, the end result is the same. You no longer have a job. So you kind of try to figure that out and what am I going to do next? And I do feel a lot of people enter back into corporate because they don't know the steps it takes to become an entrepreneur. It's a different beast. Um, it's, it's more rewarding. It's more fulfilling because you're doing it for yourself. And at that point, if you get laid off, it's because of you. Not because somebody said, we no longer need you in our organization. So that's the most fulfilling part because you work hard to keep up with doing the things that you really wanna do. And that's the, that's the brightness that I found in this. Um, you know, I've been coaching people a long time, even when I was in corporate, you know, helping people out and training them and doing these things. And you just take that, take those skills again, 
you know, I have presentation skills. I have you know, all of these things that I, I would do over time and just create something that was my own. And so that's exactly what I, I encourage individuals to do. Ah, that's what I'm talking about indeed. That's what I'm talking about indeed. So with a lot of people being forced to become entrepreneurs and now their jobs are starting to come back bit by bit and heck even some people enjoying unemployment too much <laughs> which is really it's a gig economy <laughs> people are finding other things to do it really it, it's true it's really kind of sad we're kind of to that point what are two or three things you feel like folks may need to know ahead of time when it comes to entrepreneurship if they because there may be some people where they may see entrepreneurship and may have listened to a bunch of folks like Gary V and the Grant Cardone. And they're like, yeah, I want to be an entrepreneur. It looks romantic. Get to write my own hours, be my own boss and other that good stuff. So any advice for those who may want to be entrepreneurship but need to keep in mind some important things before they try to make that decision? <laughs> yeah, I mean, you're really taking, taking over the personality or your work ethics that you had in a, in a job. And if you don't, and that's where you start to slow down. Like I work at the same pace I worked when I was in corporate. I can't stop. Because if you don't, if you don't stop doing that, I mean, I'm sorry, if you do stop to think about what am I gonna do, I have too much time. Um, you don't learn to set boundaries. So what I tell people, especially those who are leaving, um, you know, you're going to go through the grief, you're going to go through the anxiety, you're going to go through all of that stuff because you're trying to figure out this new world. But I'd like to say make moves. And moves is an acronym. The first part of it is a mindset reset. And you really have to work on that because it's, it's really changing. And you can do that through um, meditation, do yoga, do exercise, if you need to go punching or wherever. Um, healthy eating, getting enough sleep. So those are the things that help you work on you. So that you can change your mindset and, and have more clarity. And then the O part is be open to a new title. Do you know how many people I talk to who say, well, I was an SVP or I was a VP or I was a COO, CEO. Was and is is two different things. <laughs> <laughs> that's not who you are now. So be open to a new title. And that's why I like to say, why don't you become the CEO of your life? Take control of your life as a new entrepreneur and make things happen with that. We talk about the V, the V part of moves is value your relationships. You've built up some relationships over the years uh, and personal or business, but now it's time to really hone in on those relationships and maybe build yourself um, a personal board of directors. These are mentors that will help support you through your change to become an entrepreneur. The E part is evaluate your money. Everyone has a relationship with money that formed along their life in, in part of their life. So for me, I like to say, you know, I grew up with humble beginnings. My parents grew up with humble beginnings. Their parents grew up with humble beginnings. There's a, there's a trail there. And so once you recognize that this is how I work with money, figure it out as an entrepreneur. What, what can you do to your benefit with that? And the S part of moves is share your story. Don, there's so many people who don't talk about being laid off, being because they're embarrassed. They don't want to talk about it. They think that they're going to immediately find another job or they don't know what to do. So they don't know to talk about it. And just me sharing my story. I mean, I cried the whole year after I got let go and I had a job. But I felt out of place. I felt like I didn't fit in. I didn't really know what I wanted to do. I didn't, it was one of those situations. And I'm sure if someone's listening to my story now and saying, hey, I had some of that stuff happen to me as well. And that's all you're trying to do is get someone to feel like that they're not alone. So I always will say, after you go through whatever you're going to go through, after you get laid off, go, go through it. So you can feel that, feel that pain and feel how it feels. But then after that, you got to make moves. And moves is that acronym that I just went through. Yeah. So I'm talking about that's right. Getting them notes in. That's right. Dropping them gems. That's right. Yes, indeed. About to be Don King with all the gems you giving these folks. I'm telling you. Don King jewelry <laughs> with all these gems. I'm telling you. I'm telling you. That's right. 
how to make their moves indeed. Because yeah, you're definitely right. Sometimes um we can get attached to certain towns, especially we've been in a place for so darn long. Heck, even another reason why, like, heck, even even studying a bit of leadership is a must and realizing that leadership isn't a title. It's just really what you do to influence others and those who influence you and just really realizing like, hey, like, don't get so attached to a title. Hey, make sure you try to have your finances as lined up as much as possible because, uh, yeah, that, uh, yeah, that money, it's good stuff. It's definitely some good stuff, but sometimes, yeah. you know, it can, uh, poof, you know? Yeah. Yeah. It's, uh, that's well stated. Nothing's here forever. I think people hold on to corporate so much because they feel that that's their stability. And it is while you're there, it's stability. But, you know, um, I've read studies with the APA, which is the American Psychology Association, that said the people who are left behind after a layoff go through the same emotions that people who left because they're trying to figure out when am I next? So it creates this anxiety. And then guess what? I'm gone now. So they just gave this person my work. So now they're overworked. And they go back and forth thinking, what do I do? Should I leave? Should I start something on my own? Or maybe people don't want to start something. This is not a push to say, jump out of corporate right into entrepreneurship. This is a push to say, if you have that entrepreneur spirit and you want to transition, these are some of the steps that you can take to do that. So it's one. It's just one of those things where you listen and you feel what's good for you. Um, if you feel like I didn't, I didn't go to corporate. I wasn't in corporate. I don't have those years of experience. What do I do? Remember what I said earlier, corporate could be a metaphor for life. So maybe you were a soccer mom or dad and you say, Hey, um, I've helped organize the team. I helped with the travel part of the team. I've helped you. You have organization skills that you can pull into your new career. If you've had to do any of these things, I was a swim mom and an official for many years. So yes, I can, you know, I, I could help people figure these things out with, you know, just using the skills to do those things like organization and presentations when I would, you know, be on the mic. <laughs> I was a starter, take your mark. But these are some of the things that you just pull life skills into your own and create your own career from that. That's the point I'm making to everyone. And it's a good point indeed, and it's good that you point that out because that's something that folks need to take into consideration because, heck, even myself can be guilty of doing this where it's like you do so many things that you forget what you do, and it's hard to rename or even reframe the stuff that you may have done outside of work. Like, hey, if you organized a bunch of kids on a freaking team, a soccer team, like you know how much patience is required for that you know how much skill it takes to do that Bingo. like it, it's the same thing with adults adults are just bigger kids with freaking filters that's really the only real difference <laughs> so it's good that yeah. you're helping folks to realize that they can actually rename and reframe their life experiences and channel that and repurpose that for future success yeah yeah it's super important to understand that so don't get caught up in corporate. I mean, I probably, and I tell people, if you've ever had a W-2 in your entire life, then you worked at corporate at one point. Oh, uh, you know, W-2 for tax purposes. So. Oh yeah, that's right. Caesar got to get his, you know, that's right. <laughs> Salad and all, he yes. got to get his. <laughs> <laughs> like that. Caesar got to get his. <laughs> Oh, man. So I also know that you're also passionate about helping uh, folks who are incarcerated, getting basically help with even just really just career help and to skill, stealing their skills from corporate because it's really unfair for those, especially those who've been wrongly incarcerated, which is even twice as bad with getting help. So what led to that passion? Um, so I, at one point, was coach with um, Marianne Williamson. I don't know if you or your audience are is familiar. Oh, I love that woman. She's freaking amazing. Yeah. So um, Marianne and I were talking, and it was after the release of my book. Um, we had a lot of injust going on in, in Chicago, you know, especially here around where, where I live. I live close to downtown. 
And so I, I did my best to try and figure out what can I do to help? How can I do, how can I use my skills to help these individuals? And just talking to a few people, um, you know, I have a family member who was incarcerated for many years, had gotten out and was trying to readjust to society. And that's when I learned that um, it's really hard for them because their self-esteem is gonna be shot for one. They go out, they fill out these applications, they have to check that box, yes, I was incarcerated, and then they have to wait for the declination to come through. And they do, and I know there's programs out there, but maybe not enough, or maybe we weren't familiar with enough of them. So what I would tell him all the time is, we have to use whatever you have to create your own career, like create your own job. And a lot of them just need to hear that they do have skills, they do need, and they just need help pulling them finding ways to use those skills to maybe be a landscaper, to be, you know, whatever they can do, but you can create your own career doing that as well. This is not just about jumping into, you know, it's all about taking your skills. Everything I talk about is using what you have to get to where you want to go. And that's why I felt passionate for that because I do see that happen. And that's my way of saying, you know, I can help some of these, these black and brown communities with individuals who need help figuring out what skills they have and giving them a little bit of direction on how to get there. Does that make sense? Oh yeah, it makes sense, especially um, since one of our past guests, uh, Zachary Babcock, his main passion right now is to get the recidivism rates down in the U.S. of A to at least down to at least 8% because oh, wow. he went he went through it himself and because he made some bad decisions in his life. And he lost his sister while he was in prison, too. He got that call, and he was so mm -hmm. darn depressed. And when he got out of prison, he had to go through all this BS to try to get employed and was doing some of the programs yes. they were offering, and apparently they were trash. And he was like, oh, this is garbage. Like, this doesn't teach me anything. So he's yeah. right now on a mission to get the recidivism rates down across the U.S. of A and hopefully give those behind bars looking to get out of bars and like even those who are going through that transitional period right now of coming out to just really give them the tools that they need to really create their own career for themselves because it's it's definitely rough like especially if you're you were in there wrongly accused which happens a lot yeah. which is is freaking shame yep yep absolutely and so that so i work with um there's an individual that has a not-for-profit that helps entrepreneurs who are maybe don't have any direction. And a lot of these individuals are in his courses. And so I will team up with him and we'll start doing some things together. Oh yeah. But yeah, I mean, that's, that's, that's what drove me to it. That's how I repurposed my book. Ah, good. Sweet. Well, you definitely got to shoot me the link to that so I can put in the show notes so folks can know about it. That's right. Yeah. That's right. Definitely, indeed. I will. Yes, indeed. Yes, indeed. Well, we're coming down to the magical question that every guest gets to receive, and that is if you're to wake up tomorrow and you're 25 again, but this time in 2021, with all of your knowledge and experience, what advice would you give to yourself? Oh, that is a good question. Advice I would give to myself is to be patient. Be patient with yourself. I think... Um, because that's what you, you just have to be. You have to be realizing that things come when they're supposed to come, not because you push them, you know, things happen for a reason. That's, a, that's, those are the things that I believe in and they happen in due time. So timing is everything. So be patient. Yeah, there you go. And down, down the other thing I would say to my 25-year-old um, self is it's the same thing I say to myself today is if you're persistent, you'll get it. And if you're consistent, you'll keep it. It's one of my favorite phrases. And so, yeah, at 25, if I'd known that phrase, I'd kept going as well. Oh, yeah, that's right. That's right. If you're persistent, you'll get it. If you're consistent, you'll keep it. All right, there we go. That's what I'm talking about. Well, that's going on the episode title, the episode quote title. <laughs> Good. Yeah, that's right. That's right. The KR quotes, baby. That's right. That's <laughs> right. Yes, indeed. 
She's got them rods of wisdom for you. I'm telling you. That's right. That's right indeed. <laughs> so for those who need to pick up 99 copies each of your fabulous book and share with the world and keep up with all that you're doing, what's the best way for folks to reach out to you, Katrina? I am on all social media platforms as Roddy 65 and that's K-R-O-D-D-Y-6-5. And then you can go to my website and get anything you want, which is at thecorporatebreakup.com. Uh, well, there you have it, folks. Head over to thecorporatebreakup.com. Check out all the stuff Katrina's doing. Buy a copy or a thousand of her fabulous books. Do your skills in corporate because that's what folks are going to be needing to do. And that way, take their skills that they have learned, use them to pay the bills and beyond, folks. Because we don't want to just survive here. We want to thrive here indeed. So any parting words before we close up shop, Katrina? No, just uh, stay strong, stay healthy. It's crazy time out there, but you know who you are. <laughs> and I thank you for letting allow me to be on your platform. How's it going, you super special, awesome human? Since you made it to the end of this episode, it looks like you really enjoyed yourself. Since you enjoyed this episode, be sure to share it with at least three people in your network and tell them what you really liked about this episode. 